This program was made possible in part by... Mississippi Family Farms sustain a long, proud tradition that has been handed down for generations. A safe, dependable source for food, fiber, and timber, Mississippi Family Farmers help feed your family as well as their own. Through best practices and modernization, Mississippi farmers continue to be good stewards of our land and water resources, ensuring a reliable, affordable source of food well into the future. The Farm Families of Mississippi. Mississippi Seafood Marketing, a division of the Department of Marine Resources. From our waters to your table. Fresh, local, healthy. Information available at dmr.ms.gov. Well, hello. I'm Chef Rob Stinson, and this is Fit to Eat, a new series about eating healthy and living better. I worked in a five-star Chinese restaurant at the beginning of my career, and I love this style of cooking so much that I've incorporated it into every restaurant I've ever been involved with. Asian cuisine is light, flavorful, quick, spicy, and makes a great presentation. Today we're making an Asian stir-fry and baked breaded flounder. And as always, you can find my recipes with all the nutritional information, calories, fats, sodium, etc., on our website, mpbonline.org slash fit to eat. That's me. And you know, the fun part about Asian cooking is there's a real mechanism in the way that the vegetables are cut so that everything is done in a way so that they're uniform in shape but with a huge variety of texture and flavor. Now, we're going to be using in this dish, and if you'll watch the series, you'll notice we use virtually no salt. And in this, we're using a low salt version of our soy sauce, which is half the milligram of a normal soy sauce, and it actually adds enough flavor because we're not using much to give it a great flavor. So now, Let's have a little fun. Okay, flounder. How do you know when you've got good flounder? Flounder should be simple to the nose. Shouldn't smell anything predominant when you smell the flounder. Shouldn't have any kind of a slime film. And you can see this is beautiful white flounder. It's already filleted. The skin has already been taken off, and you can see that on the back side where there's no skin. And the reason I've got two, I'm going to have a little fun with you in the middle of cooking this. I'm going to do a version that my daughter loves. And this is something using our brown rice we're doing today along with stock and making more or less a flounder soup, but something that kids will eat. And I think that's another big part of the show. So we have a lot to do in a short amount of time on this one. So I'm going to get started here. And the very first thing we're going to do is make up a batter. Now, this is skim milk that I have here. We're going to use one of these beautiful natural eggs. Mix this up. And when you say a batter, when you're taking something and frying it, you always put it into a liquid batter first and then dredge it in breadcrumbs. So the fun part about this is we're using a very, very low-fat version. And every once in a while, you know, we don't want to take eggs of a, out of our diet. They're high in protein. We've got a lot of egg farms here in Mississippi. We obviously know the flavor is there. So we're going to take this, put that mix into a bigger bowl that we can actually dredge the flounder in. Now, over here in the large bowl, we're going to actually make our breading. And this is a really healthy version of what would be seasoned breadcrumbs. And this one, you really want to keep kind of this one on record, which again, you can go to mpbonline.org slash fit to eat and get this recipe anytime you're not sure. What I'm going to do is take and place into the bowl about a half a cup of whole wheat breadcrumbs. Now I'm going to take and put about a third of a cup of soy flour. You're asking why the mix? The reason is that it cooks differently than your traditional breadcrumbs. And I find that mixing the two gives about the same consistency. Now, what am I adding to this? Some garlic powder for flavor and some onion powder 
for flavor. And on top of that, if you wanted to, you could put a touch of salt, but again, we're really doing all this so there's virtually no salt. All right, now we're gonna make a nice consistent mix and you can see that doesn't take long to do whatsoever. We're gonna take one of these flounder pieces and if you'll notice, flounder is always a little unusual in its shape that one side is smaller. You know, these are a fish that actually swim on one side their entire life on the bottom. Now we're gonna take that in, dredge it through that wash batter, if you will, then put it into the breadcrumbs and get it to coat evenly. It's not, not really hard to do, but if it doesn't, it's going to stick to the pan when you bake it. And again, this is supposed to mimic what a fried piece of flounder would be. And let me tell you, this is so much healthier. Now the trick, the final trick of this is a neat one. We're going to take our pan that we're going to bake this on and spray it. This is a zero fat, zero carb spray. Totally healthy. Place our fish directly on that. And then head over. We're going to head to the oven and pop this in the oven. Now, last trick. Again, I talked about my troca. The troca is coming up, is spraying the top of it with a little of your zero fat spray. Why do you do that? You do that so it'll crisp on top in the oven. So let's go ahead, put it into the oven, and I've got this oven a little hot. It's at 425 degrees, and at 425 degrees, it's hot enough for that thin piece of flounder to cook. And that's the trick. You don't want to take and cook it at a low temperature because it might actually burn it up a little bit. Now, let's do a little housekeeping here. Move some of our stuff to the side because we have an incredible amount of stuff we're going to do today. And what's nice about all of this, I take and I keep all of this flour and breadcrumbs and put it all separate so you've got it for future use. And I love to use it in many different recipes. Now, one of the things we're going to get started at this point is our rice, because it as well takes a little bit longer. So let's move the flounder to the side. And what do we have here? We've got our vegetable stock, our brown rice. Let's set these in front so you can actually see them. Some minced garlic, minced onion. Since this has got an Asian flair for the spice on this, I chose a little bit of an Asian chili garlic sauce. And you can find those at your local uh, supermarket, superstore, and they're wonderful. Now, let's go ahead. We're going to combine and put our brown rice into our pot. Turn that heat on. Add in that stock. And typically, anytime you make rice, just remember the two to one rule. About twice the amount of liquid as you have rice. And you notice, I didn't use water, why? It has so much more flavor. And everybody who's ever had brown rice, sometimes they've got little issues wondering, gee, do I really like it? It doesn't have the same flavor, I like my white rice. You put that stock in there and it's incredible. Now we're throwing in here some diced onion, diced garlic, about a tablespoon of onion and a teaspoon of garlic. Some cilantro. Now, the fun part about cilantro, I like to tear it up and break it up by hand, and it doesn't bruise it, and you throw it right in, and you've got that wonderful aroma. And I love the smell of cilantro. And just a touch of black pepper. And again, you know, talking about that chili garlic, that chili garlic sauce. Now, let's go ahead and stir this while we're getting started. And the only reason we're stirring it, so we mix all of that seasoning evenly in the rice, and then cap it. We've got it on relatively high heat at this point, and we'll check it and turn that down. But that'll be finishing right about the time that the show is actually completing. So wonderful, wonderful, healthy brown rice. You've seen already, 
a healthy version of flounder. And I tell you, when you think about the amount of sodium that you're saving in all of this food, it's dramatic. And many, many people have got issues. And that's one of the things we want to talk about on the show. How do you reduce the salt that you eat and the fat? If we can address those two things in a relative manner without starving you, you can have a great time. And, you know, I cook at home all the time. I absolutely do not use salt. I have found that there's so many other ways to do things without it that I don't miss it at all. Now, here we're going to have a lot of fun. On this tray, we're going to set them all to the side of the cutting board are all these wonderful ingredients that are going to go into our Asian stir fry that are already prepared. And you say, well, that's not fair. That's cheating. He's done all of that work, and I didn't see any of it. Well, we're going to pick a couple of these and actually take the time to show you. And in front here are some of my favorite ingredients that we have in the stir fry. All right, so where are we going with this? Shiitake mushrooms. Shiitake mushrooms are incredible. They're, they're meaty. They've got a pungent flavor. They're absolutely indigenous in most Asian cooking. And you can pick these up at your local farmer's market. You know, oftentimes some of the local stores have got great produce departments these days. But the local farmer's market raising products like this, there's no pesticides. There's virtually no preservatives that are added in. I love it. So what do you do? Shiitake mushroom, this is as simple as they come. Happen to be using an Asian style cleaver because it's my favorite. So like I said, at the beginning of my career, I loved the fact that I got to work in a five-star Chinese restaurant. And the one thing that they showed me, and I want you to take a look at this, everything is cut the same. Whether it's snow peas, okay, so let's say we're going to work on a couple snow peas while we're doing all this. All we do is just cut them lengthwise about a quarter of an inch wide. So now you've got the uniformity between your shiitake mushrooms, your snow peas. What else do we have in this dish? A lot, a lot. Red bell pepper, green bell pepper, yellow bell pepper. On this side, we've got some onions, some of that chili garlic sauce that you saw me using, the shiitake mushrooms. And we're gonna put in, as I mentioned earlier, a little touch of this low salt sodium, which is literally half the salt that you would be getting otherwise. Now, let's go back and peek. Our rice is going very well, so we're going to drop the heater here. And what we're going to do now, move it over to this side, put it back on that low heat, and you can kind of keep your rice just simply covered, and it'll finish itself. So now we're going to have a little bit of fun and kind of get into the details of where we are on the stir fry itself. Because this one to me is something that if you get started cooking where you're doing stir fry with all these wonderful ingredients, you can twist this up and turn it into something in case you don't care for mushrooms, that's fine. Leave them out, saute some for one person, cook the rest with mushrooms. More importantly, and I'm going to have a little bit of fun with you guys. What I want to show today is that you could take brown rice stock and make a dish that my daughter loves, which is a flounder soup. And it's an Asian-style flounder soup. So what we're going to do, I'm going to take a piece of this flounder, cut it into little cubes. All right, we're going to keep that to the side. And remember, we're doing a lot today. You'll never remember all the recipes. Go to mpbonline.org slash fit to eat. That's me. Don't forget it. And all these recipes are there. So let's move these off to the side for right now because I want to focus in on what we're going to do here with this stir fry and this trial version as well. Stir fry is incredibly quick, incredibly easy, incredible flavors. And that's one of the things I love about it so much. Let's move this other flounder out of the way. I got a hunch we'll be taking care of the crew with that later. But what we really want to do is kind of work on the stir fry. So a little bit, and I'm talking half a teaspoon of your sesame oil. Only enough to coat that pan. A little touch more. Perfect. 
Now we're going to add in our onion first. You can see the pan has already got a nice little temperature to it. All of the bell pepper can go in along with the shiitake mushrooms. The shiitake mushrooms are really meaty. I like to add them in. We're going to put our garlic in at the outside, I mean right now kind of on the outside edges so that it isn't directly over that heat because we don't want it to burn. Garlic's got a great flavor when it hasn't cooked too much. When it burns, it's bitter. Now, our green bell pepper and our yellow bell pepper. Isn't that great? Look at the colors going on there. To me, that's one of the beauties of Asian cooking is it is every bit as pretty as it is flavorful and they're so focused that there's a uniformity in how you cut the vegetables. So, you know, we've got our fish on this portion of the board. You know, you can practice how you do your vegetables. I keep them all packaged in the refrigerator at home so I can use them and they'll last a good week after you first cut them if you get them fresh. So try to get them at a farmer's market where they really are going to last better. Now, let's go ahead and toss this. Every single show you're going to hear me harp on, if you can't do that, if you feel uncomfortable doing that, then I want you to practice with a piece of toast. But look at the colors that are in there. And you're wondering, now we're going to add in a little bit of that chili garlic sauce, and it's spicy. All right, that's going to add quite a bit of heat to the dish. That's why I was very careful to mix it around all of the stir fry. And now that we're heading into the dish actually having been tossed, throw in the cilantro. I'm going to save half to put on top when the dish is done. And the snow peas can go in at this point. Snow peas are the last to go in. Why? Because snow peas take the shortest amount of time to cook. It's simple. You don't want to have everything ready and then those snow peas turn a dark brown when they're overcooked. So now let's toss it again. Stir fry, guys. If you're not stirring it, it doesn't work. You know, the, the beauty of this dish, when I first worked in a Chinese restaurant, was to watch the speed that these guys can flash those woks. And a wok is really nothing more than a huge saute pan. So this is something you can do at home and get the same flavors you would get in a restaurant. And man, it's just incredible. And let's see here now. Let's take a good look. What we're going to deglaze this. All right, everybody hears this word deglaze. What's deglaze mean? Deglaze is just simply taking a liquid, putting it in the pan, to get the heat of the pan up and it pulls anything that was stuck on the bottom of the pan out. And boy, I tell you what, the flavors, I can already get the aroma that's cooking off of them. It's wonderful. Now, before we forget, we're going to move over here and actually stir up our rice. Check the temperature of that handle. And it is looking incredible. It is looking incredible. Wonderful, wonderful flavors going on inside there. Put that lid back on. It's doing great. The stir fry, we're going to stage. And when I say stage, all that means is we're going to set it in the center where the heat of the pan doesn't hurt your countertop and let the vegetables just kind of soak down. All right, now the fun. I told you we were going to have some fun. Here's where we're going. Kids, what are they like? I don't know about you, but my daughter, when she was eight years old, if it was red, if it was green, she wouldn't eat it. So what I'm going to do is take some cooked brown rice. And when I make brown rice, I make a large amount. I put some in zip, in basically kind of put them into some storage area where you can keep them, and I freeze it. Then I'll take them out. You've got a nice resealable bag that you can use by small portions, and I cook them for my children. Same thing I do with stock. This is a vegetable stock. It's delicious. Let's turn the heat of that rice down just a hair because I see it steaming. And we're going to move all of this back over to the table where I've got those little pieces of flounder that you might remember. And we're going to put this quick dish together for the kids. So in the pan, just a touch of oil. Touch. And when I say a touch, less than half a teaspoon. 
throw my garlic in there. And now my daughter doesn't like anything green or red. You heard me say. So what do I do? I chop up some onions. I've got my fish chopped right next to it that we're going to throw in there as well together. Move it all together. And a little bit of yellow she can go for. Because it almost looks like the rice. And I find it adds a little bit of flavor of bell pepper without being too strong. Now, using that clever cleaver, I throw it all into the pan. And you say, well, I see something green with the jalapeno. My daughter loves jalapenos. She'll eat them fresh, raw, in sauces, on top of sauces. I don't know. I guess it just shows kids don't have to stay within the same rules that we do at times. Going to add a little bit of water to that pan. Now we're going to actually throw in that child portion of rice. And along with it, our stock. I mean, how easy is that? All of this is stuff that you can have at your house. And I love how quick it is. Now, we're going to grab a bowl on the side, have a little bit of fun. And you see those small little pieces of flounder? They're already cooked. That's what's so, that's what's so amazing so amazing about cutting them in the right pieces. So everything is small, nothing in there that's objectionable to a child. Now where are we going with this? You're saying, well, watch. Put that into the soup bowl, and I make sure to get all the goodness in there. All of that rice, all that broth. Let some of the rice kind of sit on top. And you're like, well, all right, what about the jalapeno? Let's move that off to the side. We're going to take it, and she loves actual slices of jalapeno. I know you're saying it's too much for you. It might be too much for me, but nonetheless, it's what she likes. And on those, I handle them with care. Take that, throw a few on top, and it's just a great, healthy soup for a child. And again, you don't have to put the jalapenos. You don't have to put you know, any of the necessities that I did. You can find whatever you think your child might like. And you know, it's just a great, you know, while we're talking about flounder, Fish contain healthy fats and omega-3 fatty acids. All of that is the best ingredients for a child, and it adds in flavors. Brown rice is such a good source of soluble fiber, it helps lower LDL cholesterol, which is the bad cholesterol. So what are you doing? You're getting your children set at a young age to eat healthy. It's a great way to go. Now, we're going to have a little bit more fun, and I'm going to put that stir fry back on the heat. Come and check our rice down here, and boy, I tell you what, that rice is awesome. I can smell that chili Thai sauce. I love the flavors that we're doing today. This has got to be one of my all-time favorites. All right, you ready? Now the important thing. We got to check, see how we're doing with our flounder. Oh my gosh. I tell you what, it looks great. I'm going to take it, set it in the center so we don't overcook it. And remember, this is not fried. This is something where I think we can actually see a beautiful crispness. We're going to check it. And look at that. It doesn't stick. It's beautiful. It's on there just right. Let's go ahead and kill that oven. Always remember, conserve your energy, guys. Turn it all off, because what we've got going on here right now is incredible food, incredible flavor. And you know, I think we're at a point, oh my gosh. The day when they have 
smell of vision will be the day that we all can go crazy. The aroma of this, and I can smell the shiitake mushrooms. It's got that kind of pungent quality that I just love. We're going to turn that rice off all together and kind of slowly but surely start putting this together because this dish is so good, so light, so healthy with all these beautiful colors. Works really well. All right, here we go. Brown rice, not too much, right on the side of the plate, okay? I'll put it here more. And just think about that, no salt. No salt in that entire preparation. One of the things that I just love about it, and yet you've got all these great flavors going on. Let's come over here now. Whoo, I love this. This is gonna be a beautiful base to go underneath our flounder, our baked breaded flounder. I tell you what, anybody who feels like they're suffering when they eat a meal this good, there's something wrong because this is absolutely delicious. We've got all this wonderful stuff going on. Let's go ahead and uh, let's give it that final presentation. Take that, look how nice and crisp that flounder is. Put it right between the two, and you're wondering, where did that cilantro go? I love to throw the cilantro around. It's got such a great aromatic quality, and it's a beautiful garnish. And remember, we started off talking in the beginning of the show. So here we go, guys, popping those cashews on top as a garnish. Remember, you can find all my recipes with the nutritional information on our website, mpbonline.org slash fit to eat. I'm Chef Rob Stinson. Thanks for watching Fit to Eat. program was made possible in part by Hey everybody, the chicks are here. Chicken! Baby chicks are one day old when they come to the farm. The houses are clean, stocked with plenty of fresh food and water, and just the right temperature. Our birds are kept inside to protect them and prevent diseases. We work hard to make sure that these chicks grow up healthy. Healthy animals ensure a healthy food source for your family. We're proud to be Mississippi farmers feeding Mississippi and the world. The Farm Families of Mississippi. Support for Fit to Eat comes from Mississippi Seafood Marketing, a division of the Department of Marine Resources. From our waters to your table, wild-caught Gulf Fresh seafood is fresh, local, and healthy. Information at dmr.ms.gov.